Striking Scorpion 82 is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Played by millions around the world, Raid Shadow Legends is known for its superior in-game graphics and now boasts over 700 unique champions which can be used for different strategies and teams to complete the most difficult challenges such as dungeons, bosses or the PvP arena. Raid is a tactical turn-based MMO battle game with a strong emphasis on hero collection with team selection, chosen skills and synergy being one of the most important parts of Raid. Game modes include Campaign, Dungeons, Faction Wars, Arena, Clan Boss, and Doom Tower. For a limited time, Raid is now offering a free legendary champion, Sun Wukong, Raid's take on the mischievous Monkey King. To access this free champion, simply log in to Raid on seven different days between August the 22nd and October the 23rd to get your hands on this awesome character, with no heroic journey to the West required. Raid Shadow Legends is free to download and play on both mobile and PC, when you use the special link in the video description below, you get a free starter pack, a free champion, and a bundle of cool in-game loot. Thanks, and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this complete army video for the Eldar, or the Eldari. Uh, as they're now called, or Eldar Craft Worlds. Uh, so in this video, it's a chance to see the whole army. It's 2,000 points, 10th edition. Uh, it's just a few days uh, after the new points values have come out uh, from Games Workshop. So Eldar, if you are not aware, have taken a bit of a hit as far as points are concerned. So they've seen some points rise. It's quite significant ones uh, for a number of their units. So this list has been adapted to that. Uh, so chance to see 2,000 points, we're going to look at the overall battle strategy, unit choices, why I've taken units, what they're to do on the battlefield. So a lot of talking tactics here in this game. We'll build up the list here, show you the different units, the reasons why they've been taken, uh, and so on. So a real chance to get into some Eldar tactic here and see a whole army at 2,000 points. And you're welcome to uh, copy this list, see how it gets on, take elements from it. You're free to make suggestions, what you'd drop, what you'd add in uh, to improve this Eldar list. So before we get stuck in, perhaps you feel inspired now or uh, during the video or the end of the video to get into Eldar or to expand your collection, do check out the link in the video description below. Uh, for the outposts, they do Games Workshop stuff at a discounted rate, usually about 20% off the retail price. Uh, so uh, I get my stuff from the outposts, they are very, very good uh, indeed. When you use that link, it doesn't cost you anything to do it, but it does help support the channel. We get vouchers in return, which we can then use uh, to get a hold of more models to actually help expand the armies on the channel when you order through the outpost. So link for them in the video description below. They ship across the UK and to most of the European Union as well. So for the Eldar, well, they've been here since the birth of the channel. The channel's named after my favorite unit in the Eldar army, which is the Strikers of Scorpions. Uh, and Eldar are a bit of a halfway house at the moment. They've got units and sculpts that are very, very old. They go way, way back uh, and it's a credit to uh, the sculpting work as to how long they've lasted and they've also got some brand new stuff as well so what i'm doing the journey that i'm on with my older uh, is i've moved a chunk of them along uh, many of the older models and then began to embrace the newer stuff coming up so you'll see a lot of the newer sculpt units being brought into this elder list uh, and the idea is that as the re-sculpts come out and perhaps new units then we'll just add those in and just be a very sort of fluid journey uh, with the elder i'm just looking forward to getting that whole sort of rainbow of different uh, unit types There's so much color and variety with the Eldar. It's a fascinating faction to collect. Perhaps I think they'd be unique as, as factions with their strong colour schemes, but for Eldar, you've got every type of colour scheme going on with these. I've always liked, loved the, the dazzling brightness of the different colour schemes available for them. So I, I found that as a massive reason to collect because uh, there's just so much diversity with them. I just really liked the, the different colour schemes. And yet they fight as one for glory. Now, rules wise, what we'll do in this video is I'll build up the list step by step, uh, bring units in, explain to you why units have been taken and so on. So it seems at the moment that Eldar, this is just one update, it's just changing the wording on a stratagem, that's it. So rules wise, they haven't really been hit, they've already uh, received a, uh, a bit of a change with the strands of fate. It's one of one result per phase and so that you can't stack them up uh, to make them as potent, but other than that, the core rules for them, like the reroll, hit roll, and the wound roll, remains. Uh, a lot of their rules remain, so nothing's really 
uh, to hurt the Eldar in that regard. So what Games Workshop have done to balance things out, because Eldar have proved to be very powerful, is they've just bumped up the points. So uh, you'll see there has been a bit of shrinkage on this Eldar list, but still I think it remains uh, decent enough. So as mentioned, you've got the the core rule here, or the army rule, which is your strands of fate. I'll mention these things here because they are a, a key part of for all the units here for this Eldar list. So I'll just cover these now. You can keep these rules in mind as, as we bring the units in. Uh, but you get strands of fate. You're rolling up a number of dice. I think it's starting off with 12. Uh, you roll with the dice, and that gives you uh, your results. So say four sixes, two fives, four, and so on. And you just roll them out. And then they, uh, once per phase, you can use those as like a fixed result. So you can take a six and then say, well, that counts as a six for a hit, for example. Uh, so you're able to, the whole idea is the Eldar can see the future and, and uh, predict what's coming. And so they can try and manipulate the future and so on. That's reflected with the Strands of Fate dice. It's very, very useful indeed. For example, like on Overwatch, uh, you've got one weapon. It's really good. So rolling to try and get a six, you can just say, well, I'll play Strands of Fate. Uh, and then take a six that you've got on standby and use that as a hit roll. So it could really, really help out. It's very, very useful indeed. Or you've got some crucial rune, wound roll where you need a three or more and you don't want to risk getting that one or a two and you've run out of command points, but you just go to Strands of Fate, take a three. It counts as a three and so you just get a bit of reliability coming through with that. So it's exceptionally useful. And then combine that with the detachment roll for Battle Host, which I think is exceptionally strong. Unparalleled Foresight. Each time, every time an Eldara unit from your army selects to shoot or fight, you can reroll a hit roll and a wound roll. So especially useful for like single shot high caliber weapons such as Bright Lancers. You're rerolling your hit, rerolling your wound. So, so, so useful. So uh, these are all strong. And then on top of that, the enhancements, uh, I'll come back to those a bit later on. Uh, and then the stratagems are strong enough for the Eldara as well. So you've got Feigned Retreat, Movement Phase, this after unit from your army makes a full back move. Uh, you can declare a charge and shoot. I mean, what CP? Absolutely superb. Matchless agility, guarantee. I haven't used this one very much, but there's a guaranteed six inches for your advance, which could prove most useful tactically. Fire and fade, which is shoot. Uh, it costs you two CP, but you can shoot and then make a normal move away. So useful for things like jet bikes and so on, move up, shoot, and then disappear. Very, very strong. It is 2CP though. You've got Blade Storm to help you out with your shooting. So uh, it's critical wound, 6 is to wound, it's an extra for minus 2, so just as you need a bit of support uh, for 1CP of your firepower. There's Phantasm, which people have said is perhaps the strongest one. Uh, so an Eldar unit from your army. It can make a normal move up to 7 inches, cannot embark within a transport. So you do it at the end of the opponent's movement phase. So you think you can get ambushed or taken out, you can just make a move and pull away. I think that's the one they've just just updated on the rules. I think that's the one they've just changed. Phantasm, yeah, you can only do it on infantry now, so you can't use it on bikers and vehicles and so on, wraith lords. And then lightning fast reactions, which is minus one to the hit roll, which you can't do on wraith constructs, and it's shooting or fight phase. So very useful stratagems, some of them very powerful. So Eldar are in a good place as far as the rules are concerned. Games Workshop don't seem to have gone after the rules too much with them, they just bumped the points up instead. And I think I had a list drawn up and I've been able to adapt to it quite well. I've dropped a couple of things, but uh, managed to keep 99% of this force intact. So I think now's the right time to do this video just to give you the latest points. So I guess we'll build the army up. We'll start with uh, our beloved friend, Bright Star, who is the hope of the Eldar and his mission is to bring back the crown from the channel for the channel for the Eldar. So it's a bit of a showcase as well. It's a chance to see the models. There he is. Superb model. The, the, just incredible. Really, really nice. I tried to take the color scheme from some of the original Rogue Trader era artwork for the Elder. It's a brilliant color scheme. There he is. So Bright Star, I've called him, like so. So uh, I run him as uh, an Autark Wayleaper, which is a lone operative Autark. So he's able just to operate by himself. He doesn't uh, have to uh, be a bodyguard. He can operate just by himself. He doesn't have to join a, a unit and so on. 
So you get steep strike ability. Uh, it's modeled here as the wings, but he's got the uh, warp jump generator there, so that can count as that. So I'm not expecting him to single-handedly win games, but he's a useful model. Uh, I'll probably take the Howling Banshee Mask, so he'll gain fights first. He gets Path of Command, which for the Eldar Stratagems being so strong, uh, I think he's well worth taking. At the start of your command phase, if he's on the battlefield, so usually he'll be on the table even though he can deep strike in, uh, you gain a CP. Not rolling for it, you're just going to get it. So that's going to be 5 CP uh, if you keep him alive through to the end of the game, which I think is, is very, very useful indeed. Uh, he does grant plus one to leadership tests. Uh, he's not really going to come in handy. I'm probably going to forget it during the game. Uh, but I'm able to then give him... I take the Dragon Fusion Gun. So it's an assault weapon. So he's got movement 12. If he's a way leaper, he's able to jump nice and quick around the board. So movement 12. Uh, it's just one attack. But it is twos to hit. Remember, you've got your reroll hit roll. So you're looking at twos to hit rerolling. So he's going to get that hit with the Dragon Fusion Gun, which is range 12. Uh, strength 9. Uh, so decent enough strength. Rerollable again, remember that on a single shot. Uh, AP minus 4 and D6 damage. If it's within range 6, it's D6 plus 3, which is very nasty indeed. Uh, and then remember, strands of fate. So I could try and use that for the hit roll or for the win roll. Uh, or the damage roll. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that would be um, 9 damage <laughs> if that comes through. I think so. Quite often forget about the damage roll. Yeah, it is, yeah. You can use it for advancing. Battleshock test, charge roll, damage roll, hit roll, save and throw, wound roll. The, 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 it's so dynamic, so, so useful. So yeah, you could potentially inflict nine wounds of damage with him. So real sting in, sneaky sting in the tower with him. Uh, then for close combat, it's not bad. I take the Star Glaive, five attacks at threes to hit, strength six, minus two. And two damage as well, so it's not too bad in close combat. But he's just a little supporting unit. One that I try and keep alive. Harvest those command points and add. plug in a gap where he needs to. He's not going to wipe out whole units and so on, but he's a useful little unit. Uh, he comes in at with the new points, has taken a bit of a jump in points, so there's definitely some value with him. Uh, he's now 115 points uh, here for this list. But I've put him in. I originally in the list before the update had enough spare points to give him the phoenix gem it's an extra 25 points if you take him and you can find the points then add this on uh, the first time the bear is destroyed roll d6 on a two plus you keep it to one side uh, at the end of the phase set the bearer back up again as close as possible to the previous position uh, with, with four wounds remaining he just comes back to life on a two up with all of his wounds amazing to be able to do that so and be able to drive the opponent mad uh, if you're able to do so. I've literally run out of points. I would take it, but uh, not been able to with the points increases. So that's it. All type way leaper. No way saying he's the strongest unit. It's perhaps one of the weaker units, but he's just useful enough. And I can sneak him around the board uh, and make use of him in each game, I'm sure. So we'll put him there. My Eldar force. Eldar, along with other factions such as Drakari, um, are known as like glass hammer armies where they can hit hard uh, but they can shatter just as easily so there is that vulnerability of the elder they're not as tough as other factions that are out there they're not as tough as space marines uh, chaos space marines and so on so to offset that as much as possible i've got units that are uh, aggressive units but i use them conservatively so i'll hold them back and not throw them in because they'll they'll, they'll get destroyed uh, and then i also have a chunk in my army that is uh, it's up in toughness and durable so that they can be exposed and take firepower and take damage and have much more survivability so you're going to see like a solid block section to this Eldar list and also some dynamic units that can strike hard but I, I wouldn't throw them away they get brought, brought down uh, too easily so you'll you'll see that we'll build it up as we bring those units in so he's a cheaper HQ choice the next unit to bring in I'll do this in a particular, we'll get the HQs out here first of all. So the next one is this one, it's the Avatar of Kane. He's taking a points increase, a big one. He's gone up to 335 points. Some Eldar players may not justify that. 
uh, and he'll be dropped but I'm gonna keep him in so there he is just to celebrate the re-sculpt he's head and shoulders way above the, the previous model I had the 412 one originally he's taller than him and the sculpt is superb you got multi options different heads different weapons and so on so it's a brilliant brilliant kit the games workshop have done right, and this model here has been pre-painted by Siege Studios. You can check them out if you're in painting commission work. So at silver level painting, and then I just done the last one to leave the basing and done it myself, so I could uh, just match it up with the rest of the army. So they can do that for you. They're quite flexible. So Avatar is in. I mean, what an iconic unit to have in the heart of your old army. I always try and go for the, the rule of call cool when collecting armies, just to choose units that I just like. When I first started collecting Elder over a d decade ago, I chose. Every time I bought a unit, it was a unit I liked. I liked the look of the Striker Scorpions, and I got them and painted them up. And I liked the look of the Allen Banches. It always went by that rule. And then just gradually built the uh, built the collection up. And you know what happens? Is that units that weren't that great become good in another edition. And units that were really good are not so great. So you just build up your collection, not worrying about how good things are, because things swap and change around. So just I, I would heavily advise you just buy the models you like. So there he is. The avatar is in and I like him. So <laughs> you can go just there. So yes, he's gone right up in points. So this this is one that I would use semi-conservatively. I would Yes, you have to go aggressive. You can't just sit there all game. He's got to go in, but the first couple of turns of the game, just be careful. If the opponent sees him and can get enough weapons to bear, then he will be brought down. So I think he's worth just being sensible with. His 10 inch move, tough as 12, so he's tough as any tank. Two up save, 14 wounds, so he really is tough. Four plus invulnerable save, which again, bear in mind, strands of fate. He halves damage, it's brilliant durability. And then Eldar units within six inches get plus one to advance and charge rolls made for this unit. So I guess that applies to himself. So on, on the advance, he's uh, d6 plus one, I'm guessing. Uh, there's a few little shenanigans things going on with him. So he can shoot, he's got the Wailing Doom. And correct me if I'm wrong, if any of the rules I talk about are wrong, then just let us know in the comment section below. But with the Wailing Doom, it's range 12, just the one shot, two to hit, strength 16, AP minus four and D6, plus two damage. It's a dangerous enough weapon. Now, I think you could play Strands of Fate on your hit roll and use a six. Which means you'll then tap into D3 sustained hits. You potentially could get four hits coming through this weapon. So there's the potency there. If they all went through, a 4D6 plus 8 damage. You know, in the, in the extreme end of things. But even if two went through, 2D6 plus 4 damage is, is devastating against any target. So there is potency with that weapon. Especially if you can use a Strands of Fate 6 with that. Proved to be very useful indeed. And bear in mind that single shot, yes, but you're rerolling your hit roll, rerolling your wound roll. So that's a, a potent enough weapon. The other trick with Wailing Doom is to even use it on Overwatch to automatically get that six to hit. And then that six to hit on Overwatch pops the D3 bonus hits coming through. So even on Overwatch, something comes around the corner at you, you can uh, let loose with an auto hit coming through with the Wailing Doom. So there's little tricks there that which can make it very potent indeed. The main reason for taking him is uh, the close combat, so he can. Sh there's two options, he can strike, six attacks, two to hit, strength 14, minus four, d6 plus two damage. Now if he makes contact with a tank, uh, he should be causing trouble. And then the Wailing Doom, for sweep attacks against more hordes type stuff, double the attacks at 12, two to hit, strength seven, minus two, and two damage. So I very much like the avatar of Kane, he's definitely a bullet magnet. I mean, if the opponent sees him walking around the table, he's, he's not exactly going to ignore him. So <laughs> I think I'll, I'll, I'll make use of terrain and so on uh, as much as possible, but not not so these relegated out of the game, uh, but more of a measured approach uh, with the avatar of Kane. All right. So next up, we'll go for we'll talk about a combination which I experimented with and. Uh, very very happy with the results so I'm going to keep it in this list and that's uh, James R Banches and the Falcon combination so we'll start with James R first of all she's been in and out of lists a bit lackluster not that great in performance so I painted up this one here and again just this is one of the first sort of re-sculpts from Games Workshop 
Did Jane's are first, then they done the benches later on. But there she is. And I'm transitioning the basing at the moment to a slight difference. If you can see the difference between the two. A lighter brownier grey for the trim. Adding in some grass tufts onto the base, like a spring green kind of colour going on. So it's an easy uh, revamp to do, but it's just a bit more life here, like a rebirth uh, for the old with the updated basing. You can see it on the avatar in, avatar base as well. Like so. But anyway, change the size there. I'll put her just there. Her stat lines, as they are, are still not amazingly good. There's other Phoenix Lords that are better. Uh, five wounds, two up save, only toughness three, movement eight, the silent death for assault, uh, range 12, six attacks, two tits, strength six, minus two, one damage. It's all right, pick off a few like light infantry and so on. The blade of destruction, six attacks, two to hit, strength six, minus three, two damage. So it's okay, kill marines. Then the blade of destruction uh, can spread out to 12 attacks, two to hit, strength four, minus three, and one damage against hordes. So she's okay, but it's nothing too scary going on with her. Uh, then Storm of Science. So while she's leading a unit, each time all the unit makes attack, it's plus one to the hit roll. So very, very useful indeed for a bodyguard, which we'll come to. And then the Whirling Death. There's Heroic Intervention Strategy for zero CP. So yeah, useful enough. She's got a four plus invulnerable save, which is tricky enough to try and get rid of. So we move on. It's sort of a build up here. So Jane's Eye by herself is okay. But then in combination with benches, uh, it's a better loadout. So I just take five, just so they can go inside the Falcon. So these are the re-sculpts from Games Workshop. And going by those, they're utterly superb. I really, really like them. They're a brilliant job. So, very excited about that. I'll show you another one. They're a glorious plastic kit. Very, very happy with them. So it's exciting times, for sure. And it's, there's no point waiting around for more stuff to come along, just to, just embrace what's already here and enjoy it. I think that's the, the plan of the old up. Here we go. So she looks at home now amongst the bodyguards. There's uh, six of them in total, her and the five bodyguards. So we're looking at, there is two wounds on the Exarch for these. Uh, four up save, five plus invulnerable save. Uh, now, one question that's come you can leave it in the comments section. This unit is eligible to declare a charge in the turn in which it advanced or fell back. So fall back and charge or advance and charge. Very, very useful for the Banshees. But Jane doesn't get it. It's not here. So does that mean the whole unit is not allowed to use that? I wonder. So if you know the answer to that, leave it in the comments section below. Uh, standard weapon is the Banshee Blade, three attacks each, three to hit, strength four, minus three and one damage, so it's decent enough power swords. Uh, I'd probably go for the Executioner, four attacks on the Exarch, three to hit, strength five, minus two and two damage, just a bit of higher damage potency coming through. So again, Jane's Design and the Banshees are okay, and then what really helps them in a massive way is taking a Falcon. So points-wise, we're looking at 105, which is a cheap enough HQ choice for Jane Zar. Uh, five Banshees is cheap, just 85 points for those. And then the Falcon, I think, is cheap in points uh, at 140. None of those sort of points increase as well, so they've stayed the same. Now the Falcon, and I'll show you this model. This has been on the channel for like a decade. And there it is. Now the blue that I'm seeing on screen is quite blue from what I can see it's more of a turquoise color you can maybe see it coming through and rotate it around but I really like this, this color scheme here it's my own sort of custom craft world uh, here loosely based on the Ibrasil color scheme there it is and again this is a unit that's been shelved and, and stored away and it's great to see it back in action again uh, for the Eldar. So I'll just put the Falcon just there. So what I'll do is I'm going to run through the Falcon stats and then we'll talk about the supporting role for this thing and sort of battle strategy and stuff as well. So transport capacity of six. I hope so. 
yeah, six infantry. So that's changes are in the bodyguard. Yep. So movement 14. It's very, very fast around the board for a vehicle. So that's superb. Toughness nine, three up save, 12 wins. So first thing to talk about is protection. So that this vehicle is going to offer protection to the, these are soft. This is glass hammer across here. These will be gunned down, moving out across the board. They can be ambushed, destroyed, picked off quite easily. Put them inside the transport vehicle. Now they're a lot tougher to get rid of. So that's the first role for the Falcon is protection. The second role is speed. This will go quicker than they can on foot. Eight inch move, 14 inch move. So I can get where I need to go quicker with those. The next reason for taking the Falcon is firepower support, which I, I think is excellent. It's equipped with a Bright Lance. It's range 36, so it can hold back. This is going to be one of my conservative strike units. This is a unit that I'm going to hold back and, and not commit too early. It's not going to be the tip of the spear that take the brunt of the shooting coming through and damage this thing. It's going to linger at the back, provide firepower support, hide, and then maneuver out uh, as a support. And these I've given a free roll across the table, so these can uh, firepower support, they can defend, they can support and attack, they can swing around the flank just with the speed and protection of them. And the ability for them to fight by themselves without help is they, they've, they've got free reign to go around the table wherever they need to go. So you'll see that in games, hopefully these have got a, a freer roll. Uh, and even if you're not going to run this combination, think about other aspect warrior combinations uh, that you could run that would fit six models to fit inside this. Uh, Fire dragons, for example, could be one combination. So the Bright Lance, uh, one shot, three is tier. Strength 12, though, it's a real anti-armor weapon. It's brilliant. AP minus three and D6 plus two damage. So, so good. Uh, remember your built-in reroll. Your built-in uh, reroll to hit and to wound. Remember Strands of Fate for your hit roll, your wound roll, or even the damage roll. You potentially get eight wounds out of that single shot coming through. God, it's decent. And then I would take, as the Bright Lance option, then supported by the Pulse Laser, which is range 48, three shots, Three to hit, strength nine minus two, and there's d6 damage of that as well. So if you roll well, you really could cause trouble for armored targets and monsters and so on. Then take the Shuriken Cannon for another three shots. Oh, just two. Sorry, no, no, no. Shuriken Cannon, yeah. Range 24, three shots, three to hit, strength six minus one, two damage, and sustained hits of that as well. So I would have probably taken that, but what? made me definitely take this combination is the special rule for the Falcon, which is fire support. In your shooting phase, after this model has shot, select one enemy unit hit by one or more of those attacks. At the end of the turn, each time for any model in that disembarked, any unit that disembarked from this transport, this turn makes the attack that targets enemy unit. You can reroll your wound roll. I can hit well enough with the banshees, uh, but wounding a target can be difficult. Strength four, strength six. Uh, strength five and so on coming through but if I can reroll wounds with these you've just amplified their ability uh, in a huge huge way so now Jane's are quite average now becomes pretty good if she's able to reroll her wounds and the same with the bench it's a little unit like that if they're rerolling all their wounds coming through there's real potency uh, there with them as well so that rule is, is so so good oh, a little trick I think you can do is fire the turret weapons that say an armored target and then just fire the Shuriken Cannon at a softer target that they're going to charge into just to make sure you've got those hits coming through. Three chances of getting threes should be okay. So this is like a, all contained together. I've got mobility, firepower support, and then well-supported close combat potency uh, coming from this vehicle as well. So I really liking this combination. Uh, and it's, it's meant that I've been able to bring Jane Zar back in. It's actually quite good now because of the Falcon. Uh, and the Falcon uh, helping these become better by protecting and moving them around the table. So it's a little combo across there. You can try it if you want, see how you get on, but I, the couple of games I've played, uh, it's meant that I've, I've kept this. It's worked well enough so far. So I'm gonna move the Falcon just around here, like so, just park him up like that. So next up, that's those three that came as a cluster. We've got our HQs. We've got a combination across here of like a conservative attacking type unit, one that's not going to throw itself in too rapidly. Right. And then the Avatar of Kane's the same, aggressive but measured approach. And then we've got a uh, plug the gap, Sky Leaper or Way Leaper as well. So I would bring in 
Okay, yeah, we'll go on to these. Wraith Lords. I have three of them. I'm going to run two in this list. 2,000 points. These haven't changed. 160 points, whatever kind of combination you go for. One of my favourite units. I love this pose across here. There's the updated basing. And again, it's painted in my Brazil craft world. If you go onto my channel and search for the videos and type in Eldar painting tutorial, I've done a tutorial actually showing you how to paint one of the Wraith Guard. It's one of these models, one of these models here. So if you like the look of these, there is a full tutorial for them on the channel. So you can check that out for the Eldar. There's that one. There's another one as well. Painted about 10 years ago. So they truly are an ancient unit which fits quite nicely these give me height toughness durability and presence on the board Eldar I can't have them all as glass so I've got to have some kind of durability on the board and these can act like an anchor for the army they're tough enough to get rid of decent firepower support coming through as well which we'll talk about with those but two uh, ray floors in the list and we'll zoom out later on you can see the whole footprint of the army how it looks so with the Wraith Lord, these are ones that are to move out and to take hits, take damage and, and survive as much as possible on the board. 10 wounds, toughness 11, 2 up save, 8 inch move. There's no damage bracket with these, so they'll fight as efficiently on one wound as they do with 10. And the combo I go for with these is double Bright Lance. So bear in mind, reroll, hit roll, reroll, wound roll, so their firepower really can be good. Uh, you can translate a damage roll, so there's real potency with their firepower. Uh, they are fours to hit though. Range, yeah, uh, strength 12, minus three, and then d6 plus two damage with them. Then what makes them superior to tanks is their ability to actually strike back in close combat. So I can go for the Ghost Glaive with uh, four attacks. In fours, strength 10 minus 3 and d6 plus 1 damage. Or I can sweep with double the number of attacks, of strength 7 minus 2 and 2 damage. I'm not expecting these to. Yeah, I'm not expecting these to wipe out whole units, win the game for me. They just don't have the striking power. They're not as good in close combat now as any three, uh, fours to instead of threes. So I can't expect too much from them. Uh, so they are a. Reliable unit, and durable, so they're able to like move out to an objective. You usually see these deployed, so they push out onto objectives, then just anchor objectives and just sit there and survive, and be able to take damage coming through. You know, toughness 11. It's going to be tough enough for a lot of even heavy weapons to try and get wounds against them. So what I'm saying is I'm not expecting them to charge into a unit and just wipe it out. I think they're going to struggle with that kind of thing. But just to be there as a presence on the battlefield, keep that firepower coming, move out, hold objectives, and, and support the army is the plan with the two Wraith Lords. So that's the two Wraith Lords, just adding a bit of height, a bit of presence to the list. Alongside the Avatar, it's nice to have that, you know, the Avatar is flanked by a couple of Wraith Lords, it's nice support and stuff. I've lost the Wraith Knight, I've dropped the Wraith Knight from the list, so I miss his firepower, but if you add up the double Bright Lance here from the Wraith Lords, and then the Falcon support coming through, and even the Avatar as well, there's, there's still potent firepower available here. Uh, with this Eldar Force. So, what I tried out in an experimental game seemed to work really well, and that's taking bringing back my Wraith Constructs. So, Wraith Guard, which is these models here, which again, they're units that have been shelved and stored away for literally like a number of years in the channel, which is a tra tragedy. Now the Wraith Knights been dropped uh, it's freed up the possibility to bring these in and what's required in this Eldar list uh, is this sort of durable uh, section within my army that's there to absorb damage and to move out and to move under fire and, and, and be under pressure during the game so there's two elements to this Eldar list there's this solid chunk that's there to move out to the center of the table grab objectives defend objectives and, and take the brunt of the opponent's attacks uh, and then there's this more fluid free reign supporting stuff that's that's weaker and can get taken out quite easily uh, but it's got fast striking power either of shooting or close combat so it's those sort of two elements going on 
Uh, so these are to, to bolster the more solid element of the Seldar list. So there's Wraith Guard, and then there's Wraith Blades. If I cover both of these units. I think I've covered all the points so far. This is um, a 2,000 points list exactly. So Wraith Blades now. I mean, look at the... I see these things on the board. They're good reinforcements to have. So these are magnetised here so I can swap them out for the blades. So there's the axe and then the arms. And these are very thin little magnets. One glued onto the arm, one glued onto the shoulder. No real cutting required. They're very thin. I believe they are, the diameter is 0.5 millimeters. They're very, very thin. And, and then they're cross, they are, I think they're four millimeters across. So thin little magnets. But you just stick them on with super glue and you magnetize nice and quick. So two squads of five. The argument is that you could go for a full squad of 10, uh, but I've gone for a, what, I have, what I have currently, which is, uh, five of the blades and then five of the Wraith Guard. So Wraith Blades you're going for close combat. Uh, you can take Ghost Swords which will give you five attacks at force to hit strength six minus two one damage or you can drop in your number of attacks and take the Ghost Axe which will be three attacks at force to hit but it's strength seven is a bit stronger. It's safety minus two and it's two damage so it's higher damage. Uh, the trade-off is uh, that you would get with the Ghost Axe the four plus invulnerable to save for taking the force shield in the experimental game that I played, I, I really missed that, so uh, I, I'm going to go for the axes for these. So you're going to get a full plus invulnerable save across uh, the unit to add to their durability, because I'm expecting the opponent to go after them, because I'm going to move them out, say, to the centre of the table. So this is a unit I'm expecting is going to take flak uh, on the board. So they then get a roll here, Malevolent Souls. So if they're slain before they're removed from play in close combat on a four plus they get to fight before they're removed, which is okay. So in the Wraith Guard, this is a close combat support. These are to offer firepower support. Um, so short range anti-tank, again, just to compensate for the loss of the Wraith Knight. So the Wraith Cannon, range 18, I think they used to be range 12, but the range 18, so it's not too bad a stretch for 10th edition. They are devastating wounds. So sixes to wound will now ignore saves and invulnerable saves. Just the one shot, only hitting on fours, but we'll come back to that later on. Strength 14, the potency of it's really, really good. Eight minus four and D6 damage. So very dangerous weapon. They get war construct once per battle round when an enemy unit targets this unit. After the unit's finished making its attacks, and that could be close combat or shooting. Uh, this unit can shoot as if it were a shooting phase, and when doing so, this unit's ranged weapons have the pistol ability. So you find yourself in close combat, the opponent's shot your pistols or has attacked you in close combat uh, in the fight phase, and then you actually get to shoot. It's once per battle round, so they can keep doing it. <laughs> so fine. I like, do like that rule. So I'm torn between the two. If I was to go for a squad of 10, I'd have to paint up an extra five of either of, either of those. But I've got myself two units. You know, I've got one with the shields and the axes that can punch its way through, clear a path in close combat. I've got a follow-up unit that could follow behind with a bit of firepower support at the same time. So that's certainly an option. Now, to support those is a Spirit Seer. With the previous list, I had enough points to get two Spirit Seers. So tragedy of tragedies, I can only have one now just with the points going up in price never to shrink the army down. So it does mean the spirit here is going to have to. I'm going to have to choose which unit he joins uh, at the start of the game. If I did have a full squad of ten of either of those, obviously you can then just go with the one unit and then you'd be buried in amongst the single unit. They're 100 percent worth taking. The benefits they give out are superb. So spirit mark. Whilst this model is leading a unit, weapons that unit have lethal hits. That's excellent for these sixes to hit auto wound. Brilliant. Sixes to hit auto wound. Uh, with the blades, superb. And on top of that, it's plus one to the hit rolls. So now they've gone up from fours to threes to hit for shooting and close combat. It's a massive, massive benefit. Uh, and then on top of that, which really sealed the deal, is Tears of Isha, psychic ability. Whilst this model is leading a unit in the command phase, you can return a destroyed bodyguard model to the unit. So not only are you able to give out all those buffs, you're able to restore whole models. So, so good. They've got decent durability. Say they have taken a bit of a hit, they've lost two of them as they've led the, the, the point of your attack and then your command phase. 
bring a model back to play. It really does help out with the durability. Yeah, and then on top of that, their stat line is pretty good. Toughness seven, three wounds, two up save, four of invulnerable save on those. Uh, and infantry as well, so you really you really can dig them in. So I've got so now I, I've got I've got Eldar units that can dance around the table. I know full well that they're, they're, they're not too durable and the opponent can take them out. But I've also got an armor, a, a, a chunk of my army that I know will be difficult to destroy. It. And so that's a, a real bonus if you're able to to have that in in your list in any list it helps out so points wise 170 points for those i think they were cheaper but they've now been put to 170 points as well so they're equal number of points uh, free of those two units and the spirit seer is a bargain i think at 65 points for him so temporarily i'm using this eldrad model as my spirit seer it's not 100% suitable, but it is okay. It's sort of a psychic type model. Perhaps the most flamboyant looking spirit seer you'll ever see. Um, there is an official spirit seer model which you can get, like so. But I think just as effective would be one of the warlocks. Now, they're ghosts at the moment. <laughs> I've only sprayed them white. But there's those two there. Uh, either of those two, I could run those as a spirit seer. I can't see a problem with that. Um, so you can run them. It takes a witch staff, but it doesn't doesn't matter. So that's those two, and they're brilliant, brilliant sculpts from Games Workshop. So I'm gonna paint either of those. I'll paint both of those up uh, and run them as uh, spirit seers. Shouldn't be a problem. Or you can go ahead and get the official spirit seer model. So who to join? That's just the, the jarring part of the army. Originally, I'd had enough points to get spirit seer for each, which would have been the ideal situation. So that's that combination. So what we've got now is we've got a nice core, solid core. We've got a free rain unit that can maneuver firepower support and unleash the banshees. I've got a, 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 a roving way leaper, and then I've got in the heart, the beating heart of the Eldar army, uh, the, the fiery heart is the, the avatar of Kane, real sort of showpiece, distraction, hard hitting unit as well. So truth be told, we need speed in this list. So that's what we're going to focus on next. I've now got uh, a fast moving element, exciting element to this Eldar list as well. So I have three speedy units, each with a different style and different purpose. So in no particular order, I'll bring them in. So first up is a uh, unit of Shroud Runners. So that's these two-man sniper bikes. Absolutely superb concept from Games Workshop. Massive fan of these. Brilliant, brilliant models. I always thought, you know, what other unit could they do? What could Games Workshop come up with? And they brought these out. Brilliant job. So that's those. Squad of three. I'm going to put them just here. Squad so one, two, three. So now I've got a very, very quick unit. Shroud Runners move 14. Four up save, three wounds. There's some durability, but I, I'm going to call these a glass hammer unit. There's not much to them. It, when your opponent goes after them, they're, they're dead. They are, they are going to die quick enough. Um, so five plus invulnerable saves. The, the ideal situation for these is to keep them out of trouble. This isn't a tip of the spear type unit. Uh, they can snipe with their range of long rifles at two damage and precision. One shot each. And then you've got uh, the scatter lasers as well. Six shots each, hitting on threes. Yeah, they've changed these ranges to hit on twos. Hit on three, strength five, AP zero, one damage. Uh, nice range on here, range 36. So this type of unit is my anchor at the back. Firepower support when it's safe type unit. So sit on an objective, relocate quickly if you need to uh, with them. So jump onto another objective, pull away from trouble and so on. Uh, and then if it's safe, just tuck out a bit of firepower support, uh, but not take too much risks uh, with them. They're cheap enough coming in at Around about 80 points, I believe, for Shroud Runners. They are 80 points, yeah, 80 points for those, which I think is uh, cheap. So that's one of the speedy units. This one is to work usually at the back line. The next unit is uh, Wind Riders. So 
These have proved to be very, very useful on the table. Now, I'm going to run a squad of six just to try and get as much out of them as possible. And the idea of these videos is to give you a bit of hobby time as well. So I've, I've done them in squads of three and then just put chevrons on the front just to mark them out. So squad one, squad two, and there is a third squad as well. And I just combine them together if I need to. Like squad of six, I'll just take squads one and two, merge them together. Again, they're in that Ibrasil color scheme. So squad of six of these, they're not being joined by anybody. I'll just tuck them over here just to line everything up. They're not being joined by anything. They just operate by themselves. So this is another speedy element of my Eldar list, uh, but they are to operate sort of in the middle of the table uh, to provide pinpoint firepower support. Definitely taking shuriken cannons. Range 24, so they can't sit right at the back, but they can push up sort of one third of the way up the board, uh, or halfway up and then provide firepower. Three shots, they are sustained hits one. Any sixes coming through pops an extra hit, great bonus to have. Threes to hit, strength six, minus one, and two damage. And the ability of them just to, to kick out that firepower coming through and just harass any kind of target, even just trying to cause lots of wounds against vehicles on fives and so on. Uh, heavy infantry, light infantry, hordes, they'll happily shoot away with their weapons. If they're firing at a target that is closest to them, it's reroll hit rolls of one. And if they're shooting a unit that's on an objective, which usually is going to be things like Space Marines, Astronautarum, you know, Guardsmen, which their weapon's really well cut out for. And they can reroll the hit rolls, so make them even more reliable coming through. All of that is good for these. You can even do the trick, I believe. Uh, get on top of a ruin and fire down, use your plunging fire ability for an extra bit of AP minus one. I think that can be done as well. And you can also play the Blade Storm stratagem when you shoot. Critical Wounds is an extra AP minus two. It's like you can get AP minus three, minus four out of them on top of the, the ruin, potentially, with them. So again, just firepower support. Just keep grinding away at the opponent with their firepower coming through. Uh, if needed, I can play Fire and Fade on them. So you shoot with them and then make a normal move. So jump up on top of the ruin, lay down that firepower and then just disappear back behind it again. It's two CP, but that could be procedurally very much worth it indeed. So these are all coming in at quick units around the board, nice bit of firepower support. Then the final unit for this list is more firepower support, but close combat potency as well. It's the Shining Spears. So I've got enough points to run a squad of six. And you can see these being added in. They are beautiful models. You'll see photographs of them, but it wasn't until I saw the models I realized just how incredibly good they are. They are really nice. If you don't have them yet, if you're an Eldar player and you don't have Shining Spears yet, then I encourage you to get them. For example, look, here's the spear. It doesn't do it justice. Photograph. So if I show you the true length of the spear, look at that. And the, the, how fine it is. It's absolutely superb. So there they are. Siege Studios painted these up again at silver level. I've done a brilliant job. I said to them, just paint the models, then I'll do the basic work myself. So that's the way they've worked out. And they've done the freehand for me as well. So I just said to them, just paint them as per the box art, just paint them to match. And that's what they've done. So very, very happy with those. They are a pride and joy unit as for this list. And this Eldar list is bulked out quite nicely. And uh, we've not just got soft infantry here. There's all sorts of wraith constructs, vehicles, tough characters, plenty of bikers in the list as well. And that nice array of colors going on uh, with this Eldar list. I guess there's bright colors going on, but with my running theme of my craft world uh, running through as well. So I need to update you on points. So six wind riders is 160. And then the Shining Spears, 240. So the Shining Spears, this is one of my uh, hitting units, but one of the ones I want to just be conservative with. So to hold back, try and resist the urge of trying to lead a charge with them, because the opponent will see them and then weaken them, bring them down, destroy them. So hold, hold, hold as much as I can. 
soften up the opponent and then bring them out to play sort of turn three, turn four, turn five. Uh, use them as a counter counter punch unit. So if the opponent brings in some units on my back line or tries to break through, I can counter with the Shining Spears, both with shooting and close combat. So 14 inch move, again, super quick. Two wounds, three wounds on the Exarch. Two plus four, three up save, five plus invulnerable save. Uh, it's minus one to the hit roll against them for shooting and close combat. Absolutely fine. Add, and then the Twin Shuriken Catapults on those. Add, and then the Laser Lance at range 6, one attack. We've also got the Star Lance as well. Uh, strength 6 on the Laser Lance, save minus 2 and 2 damage. Add, you know, the target for these is like Marines holding an objective. And then just to swarm it and try and destroy them with shooting in close combat. Sort of their ideal kind of target. And then in close combat, the Laser Lance, three, 3 attacks and the 3s. Strength 4 minus 2, 2 damage. It's a lance weapon, so plus 1 to the wound roll on the charge. And then a star lance as well. Uh, 4 attacks from the Exarch. 2s to hit with him. Strength 4 plus 1 to the wound rolls. Uh, and then a minus 3 and 2 damage. So, yeah. Some have said to take the Paragon Sabre is pretty good. No, oh, it is good. It is really good. Cool. Paragon Saber is six attacks. Three to hit strength, four minus two, two damage. Sheesh, man. Yeah, it's not bad. Because then I think. Oh, no. Shining Spear Exarch's Laser Lance can be replaced with either a Paragon Saber or a Star Lance. Yeah, so I usually take the Star Lance. Uh, but you can take the Paragon Saber, then it says there is a separate entry. Shining Spear Exarch can be equipped with a Shimmer Shield. <clears throat> so that means uh, he can still take the... Well, I've done it. No, I've... Um... Siege built these, mate, and they've, they've modelled they've modeled him with the shield on there. So yeah, you can, you can run both. You can run the shield and the lance at the same time. How interesting. Uh, so which will give you uh, the 4 plus Vulnerable Save for the Shimmer Shield. Okay. Hmm. And I guess there's a few little tricks you could do with that. For example, you've got a Strands of Fate dice left. It's just a four, which wouldn't help this invulnerable save. Uh, because the Exarch's part of the unit, you can allocate to any of those models, including the Exarch, who has the Shimmer Shield, and there's a four plus invulnerable save. You could put the invulnerable on him, something like that. So with these, again, I'm not expecting these to be utterly devastating. They're okay. Uh, but I'm not expecting them to be, you know, to utterly just blow stuff away. Uh, so I'd in fact try and use these in a way where they've, I know they have an advantage. So I'm, I'm looking for wipeouts where I'm trying to just destroy stuff. Uh, easier targets where I destroy a target uh, and then s there's nothing left to strike back and I can try and preserve their numbers. So they're more of a mopping up type unit on the battlefield. So they move in, destroy a weakened unit secure an objective, then move off and go and do something else. Not lock horns with a unit, get bogged down in a close combat where they just whittle down and destroy. That's what I'm trying to uh, say with these. So more conservative with them, definitely go aggressive, but use them sensibly, wait for the right time to strike, uh, and then uh, use them that way. And I think tactically, holding them at the back, they can go on patrol amongst my lines along my back line, and then once the coast is clear, deep strikers have arrived, know more of the shape of the game, then I can let them loose more. Uh, when the coast is a bit more clear for them to make an impact and mop up units and so on. So that's them. I think I covered the points. Those so 240 points in total. So I'd, I'm going to reposition the camera here and we'll take a look at, at this Eldar list. That's 2,000 points of Eldar. All right, so there it is, 2,000 points of Eldar. Uh, so I've tried to negate the glass hammer element by taking tougher type units. So ground units like the Wraith Lords, the Wraith Guard, the Wraith Blades. Uh, the avatar as well so units that i can rely upon to have that durability and stickability on the battlefield uh, and then by themselves the opponent's just going to run rings around them and, and control the game so i need that faster element to the eldar which is you know their speciality so we've got this faster wing element across here uh, mobile supporting unit at the back uh, medium range support firepower coming through for the wind riders uh, and then more the close range firepower and potency in close combat with a nice large unit of Shining Spears. I guess one of the things is, if I'm holding these kind of things back, the Shining Spears, 
the balance sheets are not committing it's keeping the opponent guessing throughout the game what's going to where are these going to go where are the shining spears going to go where are the banshees going to go and so on so that kind of uh, it's unpredictability uh, is an advantage for sure uh, and then there's free reign across here with the banshees james are inside the falcon with that combination i think it's worked really well in games uh, previously and then bright star himself who's there just to guide the whole thing and see the Eldar free to victory but I had to include him in the list and uh, you can pull out some surprises I think so that's the Eldar army 2000 points with the, the latest points values Eldar have taken uh, it's about 70 odd points coming through uh, extra so I've had to drop the spirits here and drop the phoenix gem I, did, I do have 15 points spare of this list so there's two enhancements that can be taken uh, so there's Fate's Messenger, and the units that can take that would be uh, the Spirit Seer and the Way Leaper. Fate's Messenger, uh, once per turn, just after making a hit roll, wound roll, saving throw for the model in the bearer's unit, you can treat the result as an unmodified result of a 6 instead. It's very, very useful, so I can fill the points up to make it 2k exactly with that one. The other one is the Weeping Stones, so the model, Eldari model only, each time the bearer's unit destroys an unit, roll 1d6 and add it to your Fate Dice pool, so I'm going to top up my Fate Dice. Uh, with weeping stones as well but you've got to destroy a unit to do that so it's more of a tricky one i think i'll go with fate's messenger and that will take this list to 2000 points on the nose so let us know what you think of this list i'd you're welcome if you have the units you're welcome to copy this entirely do let us know how you get on uh, what units would you change swap around uh, change the sizes loadouts combinations and so on and if you're up against this list how well do you think you would do uh, with the army that you have uh, do you think this list is any good so do make use of the comment section below see what other people have said uh, there as well and then just for discount 40k if you want to expand your Eldar collection or get into Eldar uh, then the outpost for discount 40k link for them in the video description below and when you use that link it does help support the channel that's the video keep a look out for more in this series thanks for watching and tune in next time